So the EcoFlow system, for the most part, the main components are installed. There's one other component I have, which is the uh, touchscreen, color touchscreen. That's getting mounted up front in the living quarters. So this module right here, this power module, this takes the place of my bus bars, my class T fuses, my shutoffs, my breakers, all the big stuff that's in the, the physical plant, I would call it. And then this module right here with DC fuses and AC breakers, this takes the place of my classic yacht-like breaker panel that I put in the living space, generally above the fridge. I'm gonna miss that. I, I do like that panel. But I will tell you that with 18 DC circuits and nine AC circuits, that all required crimping on every wire, crimping a ring terminal on the positive and the negative of every one of those wires that went into that yacht-like breaker panel. Here, there's no crimping. There'll be no crimping in this box. These are all lever connectors, like a Wago. So you just open, a wig, uh, open the lever, strip your wire to the correct length, put it in carefully because it is stranded wire and every strand is important. Don't let any stray strand outside of that connector. And then you just close it. So wiring this up is gonna be a lot quicker and a lot less chance for error because when you do crimp, especially by hand, you introduce human error. You know, you get eight, what did I say, 18 DCs and nine ACs. You're probably not gonna get them all perfect, right? I try, believe me, I try. So far we haven't had any problems, but this is gonna take away some of that risk. So that's this area here. If you look at this, see this pallet, we call this a pallet. This is where he can now store some of his stuff. He's bringing a lot of stuff with him. He's gonna go full time in this van. Uh, to even to the extent of playing frisbee golf. So there's a bag of equipment for that. That's gonna go right there. Uh, we put in these D-rings so that he could store his items here, bins, bags, whatever it is, and then he can bungee them in place. Ditto this side, I've got two D-rings here, and we'll add two more D-rings here as soon as this gets reinforced with an aluminum angle across the back. So it can take that strain the batteries. Now the way I designed this, obviously this will be screwed in. It's not ready right now. Uh, but a couple of screws and this pallet comes off. And then just four more screws and this whole framework comes away. And I could replace uh, these batteries, God forbid. May that day never come. Uh, basically, you loose fit your 8020. Just hand tighten it, you know, nothing crazy. Then bring it to the table and put your squares on it. You can see how many you need if you're gonna do any kind of a involved 80-20 bracket. But this bracket is gonna be in front of the batteries in the garage of John's van, his ProMaster. This is gonna surround the EcoFlow batteries. This is 5K and 5K, 5,000 watt hours. So 10,000 combined. So this is 10,000 watt hours as compared to my 640 amp hour Mama Luke, the Lithionics battery, that was 8,800 watt hours. So out of the gate, these two are more capacity, about 20% more capacity than the Mama Luke. Uh, these are more easily scalable as opposed to the Mama Luke. With the, with the Lithionics, I would have had to purchase a combiner box that we all plug into, all those different batteries plug into, and then that gets controlled by one BMS, which isn't a big deal, but that controller, that combiner box takes up quite a bit of space depending on how many batteries <coughs> you need to plug into it. <coughs> this one, these batteries all just get plugged right into here, and they also have their own type of a combiner box. Um, to add batteries. You can go up to 45 kilowatt, 45,000 watt hours on this system. We're starting him off with 10,000. If he needs an additional 5,000, which is one more battery, it will go right here. They are stackable. These batteries are stackable. It's a little odd. There's a fuse for each of the batteries in the top. So if that fuse were to blow, 
at the bottom battery of a stack, you gotta pull that 100 pound battery off to get to that fuse. That's a funky design flaw. I would have rather seen that fuse housing here on the side where we could get at it day or night. Anyway, we decided on this configuration for his two startup batteries rather than stacking two here or stacking two here. Because obviously I'd love to have everything over the axle. So to stack the two batteries here behind the axle, when we're not sure we need to add the third just yet, this makes more sense. We get use of the vertical space above the batteries. We have to put a cleat on the wall. Uh, but there you go, That's, it's, it's pretty simple and it's very efficient. Um, I have not wasted a bit of space by tucking these batteries in and then taking advantage of the vertical space above them for storage. And while leaving access, you know, I can, I can reach down here and I can pull these plugs out if I have to. All of these jacks are gonna have a, a, nice, a nice head that's labeled so they're all gonna be going like that, down that way. We call this a knee wall, okay? This knee wall obviously is to protect this component. We don't want any of these bins or bags or whatever he's putting in here to slam against this stuff. So we put this knee wall in. And then of course we got the wall in the back. Here, I did not wanna put a knee wall. The reason for that is if I did put a knee wall now we're limiting him to store only something that will fit between the knee wall and the wall. But without a knee wall, he can put a larger bin here that overhangs and he's got these D-rings that I put in. And these D-rings are from the ProMaster. We remove those off the floor and we save them in a box. And this is where we make good use of them. We recycle them, repurpose them. That's what they say now. They don't say recycle anymore, they say repurpose. So he could put a bigger bin here and strap it in. Ditto this side. We're going to put more D-rings here as soon as this gets reinforced in the back with an aluminum angle for strength so we could take care of that. And then, of course, there's a cover that goes on here. It's a pretty nice gutsy cover. So this is not installed yet because I had to put some edge banding on there. We're going to have a nice piece of 80-20 radius on the corners so we don't bang them and destroy them. I'm leaving all this open for ventilation. Speaking of ventilation, <clears throat> I am concerned about this module failing. This module contains the inverter, the charger, the MPPT solar controller, the shore power connections, okay? And then it distributes out to the van. I'm worried about one component inside that box failing. We gotta pull the whole box and replace the box. Do we open it and replace just the one component? That remains to be seen. But in the meantime, what can I do or what can you do to mitigate the chance of a failure with this system? Heat. It's very important to keep this ventilated. It's in the instructions, it's in the install manual. Make sure you've got specific ventilation airspace around it. What I decided to do, rather than mount it onto a wall, I mounted it onto these 80-20 rails, which now brings it two inches off the wall. So this is the wheel well on the driver's side in the garage. You can see how I mounted this 80-20 assembly to take the weight of my power module which is gonna be hanging shortly. And the left vertical rail goes all the way to the floor. So it carries all that weight from our bed truss all the way down to the floor. The right side rail cannot rest on that wheel well. Wheel wells are not meant for any kind of support or structure. You'll just pop right through it. So my rail does not touch the wheel well. So we're hanging off of the truss, the bed truss, and then I put in this 45 to carry some of that load from the right side down to the left side. Now we'll put our power module in and see how it fits. So now I have airflow behind this unit rather than mounting it to the wall where you choke off the back of the unit and that's where heat will build up. So I'm off the wall. I've got the specified ventilation around it. 
Additionally, I'm going to put two fans down here, thermostatically controlled fans. And that is going to keep airflow moving all around this component. Heat is the, is the death of electronics. If you want them to last a good long while, keep them cool. So that's what I'm aiming to do here. And hopefully that will mitigate the chance for failure. And he can go on his way having a lovely full-time life in his van. What else? I just want to show you the extent to which this company has gone to in terms of design and quality execution. This is simply a hard foam block that's been CNC cut and composed to hold all the bracketry, screws, wires, and straps for a 5K battery, an EcoFlow 5K battery, part of their power kit. Now, look at the time, care, and design that went into this. This is a Chinese company, a Chinese product. So if you spec correctly, you can get some beautiful work done, right? Now let's extrapolate this thought process. If they take this much time and care in designing and producing the packaging, what does that say about the actual product itself? All right, I have to show you what comes in this EcoFlow power kit. First thing, is you got all the manuals for each and every component it has its own manual. Then they give you a quick start guide as well. Very detailed, very comprehensive. This is my kind of a quick start. They give you extra fuses, okay? Besides loading up the power kit with fuses in the unit, they give you extra fuses. Every screw, is bagged individually and labeled. They tell you exactly what it's used for, every one of these. Here is a battery bracket, okay? This comes with each and every battery, and there are multiple ways to mount. You can see the rectangular part, you can mount it to the floor with these L brackets, you can mount it off the wall so it doesn't tip. There's straps, there's screws. Now we get into the wiring. It can't be any simpler. Every one of these plugs is labeled on the plug and the plug has a different insert configuration so you can't screw up. You can't put the wrong plug in the wrong hole. Templates, very well done. It's a stiff kind of a paper so it doesn't get all scashad. Look at this one. This is incredible. When you open this up, see the arrows? That's your ventilation space. And then they've got a very detailed drawing of the actual unit. You can't go wrong. These are my kind of people. I think this whole company's on Adderall. So that's it. The EcoFlow will continue to be installed and I'll give you another update as soon as I'm ready. Have a great week. I take another trip they say it's a good idea to let you know who I am who I am that's a question for the ages hey, yo. at 21 I realized my mother still makes my bed
No, that's not right. At 21, I realized Georgetown University was no place for a young artist. So I took my passion for image making and started my apprenticeship with one of the best known commercial photography studios in Manhattan. I began my studio with a nice diverse book of business. Room sets, still life, people, jewelry. But as the years went by, I found myself specializing in watch photography. Ads, brochures, billboards, web, I did it all. I shot those watches for advertising every single day for the next 35 years. All the while raising five wonderful children with the girl I fell in love with when I was 16 years old. Every chance we got, the seven of us would careen up and down the East Coast from Maine to the Keys and everywhere in between. This was in a 40 foot class A with three slides, two bathrooms, and I was the only one who drove. A funny thing happened. The kids grew up and out and I began to lose all interest in my lawn and property taxes. In fact, I was done with the whole rat race. I was stepping off the hamster wheel. What remained, though, was a smoldering desire to be free, to move about on my own terms, at my own speed, to do it humbly, quietly, and with compassion for my fellow man and nature. So I began to dabble. I traded my studio cameras for the latest in video. I've got shotgun mics, fluid heads, and powered gimbals. I am teaching myself how to write and edit my stories. I never thought I would love a piece of software more than Photoshop, but Premiere has won me over. It's a gazillion photos all in a line. I've begun traveling in my van with only my equipment and ideas to keep me company. Testing the waters, so to speak, for weeks at a time. Van living causes you to live deliberately, focused. You're always in the moment. All those mundane tasks of life are each an event in your day, memorable even. I am intoxicated by the possibilities in which this new direction will take me. Ideas and images are swirling around in my head. I hope I have piqued your interest.